Now, what do you get if you put GeoWise and Spudweb together? Well, you come out with a 5'7 dribble god that has had a prolific high school career, but probably won't get to the NBA because of his lack of size and his attitude towards the game of basketball. Today, my friends, we are going to cover the downfall of Julian Newman, a high school basketball phenom that we have been hearing about since 2013, when Sports Focus, a recruiting website, posted highlight reels to YouTube of the then 11-year-old Julian Newman making ridiculous shots over players that towered over him while he was only in the fifth grade. That video from Sports Focus would receive 3.5 million views and would make Julian Newman a star overnight. He would make national headlines being featured in the New York Times Magazine and also Sports Illustrated. He would have numerous TV appearances on Conan, Good Morning America, and eventually would get his own show on Overtime, which would be titled Hello Newmans, that premiered two years ago, showing his life and his path to the next level and hopefully to the NBA. Now by the time 7th grade came around for Julian Newman, he would already record 1000 points, making him the youngest varsity player to do so. And by Julian's sophomore year, he would have close to 4000 total points. So with the hype so high for Julian since an 11 year old preteen, what happened? Well at the age of 11 years old, he was 4 feet and 5 inches tall. Now, at the age of 19 years old, Julian is now 5 foot 7, only growing a foot and 2 inches since 5th grade. Now, even though height plays a huge factor in getting to the NBA and extending your basketball career, there have been undersized guards in the NBA that have either made a name for themselves or even rode the bench. The issues with Julian Newman stand far beyond his height. Remember, Julian dropped 91 points as a middle schooler and also averaged 12.4 points, 11 assists, and 4.3 steals a game against varsity high school players at the young age of 11 years old. The problem starts with Jamie Newman, Julian's father. Jamie Newman is a former high school basketball player, and since the age of 3, Jamie Newman would train Julian and his sister Jaden to become basketball players. Now, the problem isn't that Jamie was training Julian. With his father having prior basketball experience, it would seem like this was the best thing to do. The problem presents itself when you start to coach Julian. Now, Jamie Newman would become Julian's head coach from 5th grade until his last year of high school basketball. Jamie would give Julian free reign to do whatever he wanted on the court, over dribbling, taking bad shots, and just favoring Julian over any other basketball player on the team. This would turn into an even worse situation once the Newmans would open their own school, which was Prodigy Prep. Julian would again be coached by his father, and this would not help his case for taking the next step to becoming a pro. Julian, while he is a good basketball player, he had some pretty horrible games against great teams and his time with Prodigy Prep would not help him get positive reactions from scouts. Prodigy Prep went an abysmal 1-7 this season, with their biggest loss coming from IMG Academy, where they would lose 99-40 with an almost 60 point blowout. Now with the way this season went for Prodigy Prep, this would push the narrative that Julian Newman was overrated if it wasn't already pushed to the fullest extent. Julian would get in fights with his teammates opposing schools and would have a hard time controlling his temper while playing basketball and on the court. Julian's cocky personality would not help him on the court, with multiple opposing defenders watching his every move once he stepped on the court. While Julian was trying to get a highlight play, his defender was trying to get him on a low light play. With a lack of growth, it became easier to block him down low, and then Julian would get humbled by Lamella Ball, and while Lamella would make it to the NBA, Julian would not. His cocky personality will still be present till this day, and you could see him still argue with almost everybody that's on the court, whether it's referees, his own teammates, or even his dad, he has always had this I know type of mentality. The young prodigy will probably never live up to the hype from when he was an 11 year old hooper playing against players that were bigger and stronger than him. Now there were some controversies throughout the family. Jamie Newman would say on an interview that Julian had 15 D1 offers but said that Julian was thinking about going overseas to play basketball and take the next steps to the draft combine. But the statement that Jamie made about Julian's D1 offers were never rock solid and could never be proven. Now there are some rumors that Julian will skip college and go to play basketball overseas, which would help him extend his basketball career longer than what it would have been if he tried to attend college and if anything would have rode the bench or wouldn't have even been in a division one school. Now I can emphasize with Julian Newman 
He has had it pretty hard growing up. After the hype built around him in 2013, there would be a target on his back since he was 12 years old. This was an issue for Julian, and I think that is a big reason why he has such a short temper. Being in a situation where you always have to prove yourself every game is not a fun or an easy task at hand. At a young age, Julian had a load of pressure on his back to keep up with the narrative built around him. That of him being the best 6th grade hooper in the nation. And from there on, having to extend that hype until high school. Another reason why he could be so upset is his lack of growth. Having so much potential to be a great basketball player, and probably the best to ever do it, and not growing to over 6 feet has to suck for someone that has been playing basketball ever since he was able to walk, and had huge hopes of being in the NBA one day. But if this does end up being the end of Julian's basketball dreams, there are some alternative opportunities for Julian that he should think about pursuing. Now, with a net worth of around $1 million, Julian Newman could use his name to market himself on YouTube. we already seen him play Cash Nasty in a video for Cash's channel, and if he wants to, he could always create his own channel and grow off of what Cash and other basketball YouTubers do. He could start to play basketball for fun, or even bet to see who could win in a 1v1, and wouldn't have as much pressure to succeed because he would be doing it for an audience, and wouldn't really have to prove himself at all because he's already proven himself in the basketball court. In this day and age, YouTube is a viable option to become even more popular than a bench player on an OK team. With Julian's already popular name, he would be a hit on YouTube if that was a route that he was willing to take. Again, I don't think this is the end of Julian Newman. Maybe his professional dreams in the NBA, but not with him being a public figure. But truthfully, if he does go overseas, he could become a sensational player. We see what happens with selfish players like Jimmy Fredette and other failed NBA players, and Julian would be very young, and playing overseas, he could become a overseas phenom. I think the hardest thing he will have to get accustomed to is being coached by someone other than his father, because even as the head coach, Jamie would be screamed at by Julian. But what do you think will happen with Julian Newman? Do you think he'll fade out of the public eye once his journey to the NBA fails? Or do you think he'll start his own YouTube channel? Let me know in the comments below. But thank you for watching the video and sticking around to the end. If you want to see more videos like this, leave a like and comment who you want to see next, and also subscribe. Again, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.